Hey, Anton. Good morning for me and uh, uh, evening for you, I believe, right? Yeah, good uh, yeah. good morning. And yeah, it's a good evening for me. I'm best in Israel. So I'm mm -hmm. uh, ahead, of, ahead of time <laughs> uh, before the US. Exactly. Yeah, welcome on today. Um, I'm glad we we're able to connect. I know uh, talking to a few other members of the CAT team, you kind of came um, recommended when it came to kind of security and governance and other parts of uh, the Microsoft ecosystem. So I'm had to, happy to have you on to be able to talk about some of those topics today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I, uh, I'm also like excited from the opportunity, like uh, to spread the world. I think like security and governance is sort of like some of the things that uh, be hard to convey the message. Uh, so yes. I really appreciate the time and the platform uh, to spread it. Yeah, and I, I think it's uh, as I'm continuing to broaden the strokes of um, topics around the Power Platform with these live streams, it's good I think to have. Uh, conversations around different things that are, are available, not just in Power BI, but also supplementary um, items that can be available in Azure or anything else. So I think that's going to be um, uh, really nice to be able to have conversations around this. And <clears throat> we haven't gone really into purview too much um, other than maybe mentioning it on a couple of other streams. So I think a broader conversation around it today will be fantastic. Uh, one thing I like to do is um, always just start with uh, a chance to maybe let yourself give a bit of an introduction, kind of who you are, um, how you're involved with Microsoft. Um, and uh, you know, maybe start from there. Yeah, so uh, I'm a principal PM lead. I'm uh, with Power BI team, uh, and uh, let's say it's already a greater intelligence platform team for almost uh, five years. Uh, and uh, so in, in Power BI specifically, I joined to work on data flows, and then there were some internal shifts uh, with, between the teams. So I switched moving on uh, enterprise information management pillar, and there we were sort of like in a sort of like a corporate startup mode <laughs> where it was sort of like, okay, we have uh, like Power BI becoming more and more enterprise tool versus like self-service uh, okay. uh, deployment. And uh, we did an analysis of, hey, how can we help enterprises um, to, uh, uh, to be like more uh, confident and secure, feeling safe with deploying Power BI for tens of okay, thousands okay. of users. And uh, there came in my background in like before like joining Microsoft. So I'm with Microsoft for 12 years now. Um, so before joining Microsoft, I was uh, uh, I was serving in Israeli uh, Defense Force in the intelligence unit, uh, 800. Oh, wow. Yeah. So in Israel, many people do uh, army services. It's sort of like mandatory for most of the people. So I did it. One uh, year or two years? Seven. <laughs> Seven, okay. Seven. So, like, the mandatory is two years or two and a half years oh, now. Okay. But uh, but because I was, uh, I, I went to school, so when I joined IDF, I was with a bachelor degree in mathematics and computer science. I mm -hmm. went on the more professional path, which is sort okay, of gotcha. includes more service years. Uh, so, it's, so, I served in the intelligence unit. Uh, doing some researches and uh, uh, eventually moving to software development and uh, leading a team like around uh, uh, data for intelligence. <laughs> it's a lot, uh, but I don't want to go into this, but it's sort of like it uh, yeah. like helps you to to understand the domain of, uh, of security and compliance and also like you learn in early age how to build uh, robust systems uh, because uh, human lives rely on them so like it's a good school uh, and uh, so I'm connecting this to my Power BI data protection story yeah. that uh, so when we did this exploration some of uh, my friends that also served with uh, in IDF during the time I did were also working for Microsoft and they were on the security side of Microsoft. So we sort of like uh, did the brainstorm together and they uh, said, okay, we have here a great opportunity to extend Microsoft security products, which was at the time Defender for Cloud Apps and uh, what we call today a uh, Perv Information Protection. It has a di had a different name back in the day. So we did the brainstorm and said, okay, we have here a great opportunity to expand values that uh, a lot of enterprises use already today for office. So it's huge numbers of information protection and the uh, Defender for Cloud Apps for office. So we said, okay, so Power BI is sort of like 
a lot of enterprises sort of like deploy Power BI and also use Office. It's quite obvious, but sort of like this was our thinking. And we said, okay, let's see what of the advanced capabilities that like enterprises need and use for Office products. And that's the, it makes them available for Power BI. So this is how we started the journey. And uh, since then, so we delivered information protection, we, we delivered the data loss prevention and all other stuff that I will cover today. Um, and uh, in essence, the idea here uh, is sort of like, uh, it's not like products, it's one Microsoft. So if you're using Microsoft, we make it easier for you to use different products, which is something that Microsoft not always was great in. <laughs> we still have a lot to improve when how to connect uh, or like mix uh, different products to work together. But we are now in much better place than we were like four or five, uh, five years ago. Yeah, and I think there, there's been a lot of uh, automation that's come through with it as well, not just like what can be manually configured, but what can, you know, as even before the uh, heavy investment in, in open AI, uh, that I know Purview has, has ability to kind of scan and tag a, a lot of stuff automatically, which, which is really nice with all the connectors and everything that it has. But I, I think we're now just escalating momentum on some of the stuff that's going to be possible um, in the next you know, six to 12 or 24 months uh, as we start to incorporate a lot of those uh, co-pilots everywhere uh, to do a lot of this stuff for us as well. Um, <laughs> basically just blank co-pilot and you just put a Microsoft product in front of it. And I, I think there'll be co-pilots for a lot of different branches of, uh, of the Microsoft stack. So uh, like I have, uh, like uh, maybe it's part of my story, like before uh, joining Power BI, I spent a few years on the Azure monitor side of Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, like the, uh, some of the projects that I worked on were sort of like, hey, how we can leverage AI to better mm -hmm. monitor applications, uh, detect uh, proactively uh, issues, failures, etc. And uh, my my personal perspective from this is like, uh, it's we are sort of like the path is to be hybrid. So I don't see like copilot concept. I think it's sort of like uh, this is a concept that will probably, it's my opinion, <laughs> at least, that well, the yeah. copilot uh, concept where like you have uh, AI sort of like uh, leveraging the automatic stuff that AI can do, but it still has like the human to sort of like to determine or to ask or to drive mm -hmm. the actions. I think this is what we should expect. Uh, because it's very, very hard, almost impossible at this stage to have sort of like smart AI that actually does everything automatically. Because even in information protection, we see every organization have their own data protection story. They have like their own specific super secret project that they need to configure in their own specific certain way. So it would be hard to like at this stage to introduce co-pilot that will fix everything. But well, it's... yeah, and I it, it gets us like eighty percent of the way there, I think, in a lot of scenarios where it's um, it 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 does the groundwork for us, puts it mostly together, but then we we you know we align the pieces and get everything else kind of matching as we should. We put that human touch on it there, but you know, saving eighty percent of the work effort is still cute. Um, it's huge. It, it's going to be a long time until I can get a hundred percent. Um, and, and we can trust it to always do uh, do the correct job at at that range. But I, I think just helping save time for this stuff, I think, will be a big big lift. Um especially as things like change and, you know, and uh, using hopefully uh, additional uh, automatic alerts and everything else that can just uh, let us know when we basically need to put our eyes on something versus it, it's doing its own job. Exactly. So we actually like, uh, like for folks that will stay tuned for the entire talk, we'll sort of like this is one of the values that we deliver with data loss prevention policies uh, that uh, I will cover as well. And uh, yeah, uh, I think like we are in a very interesting world. Like, uh, uh, like we are in the world now. If I like look on uh, my career, so when I started like university in tech, it was uh, over 20 years ago. Uh, it, the tech industry was uh, a lot about tech, like uh, mm -hmm. how you store data, how you process data, how you buy cheap compute, etc. Uh, I think now we are in very great stage, like we have great technologies that can really, we can iterate really fast to improve uh, work processes and very fast uh, improve yes. uh, the life, uh, even the life of security admins, <laughs> not very popular for some reason, but uh, like if uh, the life will be easier, maybe they will be nicer. <laughs>
hundred percent agree. Like, I mean, if we if we can free up our time from from repetitive tasks into more uh, deep level thinking and other stuff that actually requires humans versus computers, I think that's that's a great thing with any uh, platform, right? Um, to to automate the uh, the mundane and the and the repeatable. Exactly, exactly. And uh, I, I feel that Microsoft is probably one of the best uh, companies to drive us towards this area er, era. Yeah. Like, because like Microsoft sort of like investing in AI for a lot of years. And I feel that with ChatGPT tech and like Microsoft approach of like focus on customer, customer folks, uh, f focused customer comes first. It sort of like gives us an ability. To, so we are set up for success here. And I hope we will be able to deliver on it. Yes. And then like just back to the open AI question, like they or mention, uh, they, I think they were very smart in, um, in investing heavily in that company. And now it's pretty much everywhere from their search engine to anything else. It, it is funny as uh, I had another PM just as one digression mentioned that, uh, like for my kid, for his kids, uh, like Bing's relevant again. I can actually use the word Bing and they know what I'm talking about because you can, Bing does Dolly image creation. Now you can actually create your own images in Bing and it has the, you know, you can, you can basically like an ask Jeeves kind of conversation to find stuff with the references and links and all that. But um, it, yeah, it's the first time in a while that I've even seen anybody like wanting to use that just because it it does do a better version of what Bard does for Google at the moment. Um, so it's uh, it, it's it's fun to, to, to watch all the open AI stuff sprinkle everywhere. Um, but uh, digressions aside, the uh, um, as far as like governments and administration and also the, on the conversations of purview, uh, where would you like to start today on um, kind of uh, going into that and also seeing if we have questions from anybody tuning in as we start to go through this stuff. So in a, in actual, so what uh, what I would like to do in the, in, the, in our session sort of like to tell you uh, what are the capabilities that we have. Uh, so when we mentioned Perview, Perview is sort of like, uh, why Perview? Perview is sort of like, today it's a bit different than people know. So I will tell a bit about what is Perview. And uh, I'm from Power BI team, so I'm not part of Perview team. So why do I talk about Perview? <laughs> because uh, this is like the big change that Microsoft is doing. So we are working as one Microsoft. So we are collaborating. So our team can contribute code in Perview and Perview can contribute code in our system. So we are working together and uh, the objective of this conversation is just to share with the audience what are the, uh, let's say, compliance, governance, administration capabilities that are available in Power BI, for Power BI, with Perview. Uh, and uh, so I, I have a deck that I sh presented in many occasions, but like the main difference now that I really encourage people just to ask questions because I know it's not always very clear because governance and compliance concepts are a lot of mm -hmm. concepts, but uh, like people usually want to ask like their specific example or specific scenario and how it can work for them. And I encourage people to ask this any question that they have. So I, I, will, I will be happy to answer. So exactly. And um, I'll be asking plenty of questions myself and for the people in the chat as well that they um... Uh, Anton wants us to be very conversational, so feel free to drop any questions you have around this stuff as they come up. Otherwise, I'll continue to um, the, the poke from my end and, and provide some questions and curiosities. Like it, it's something that I've, you know, through various um, uh, presentations that I've done at SQL Bits or anything else uh, and lots of conferences, I try to maintain as much knowledge as I can about other stuff. But I actually love live streams like this where I can bring people in who are experts with other platforms because honestly, I even come away learning multiple new things that I can either describe to my team or to clients that I have as, as uh, a, a richer set of capabilities that this tool is now uh, available for. So I, I enjoy learning even even from my perspective. Fantastic. So let's start with the uh, with the uh, uh, deck that I prepared. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I'm, I'm not seeing the chat. So if there is something interesting, just yeah, I, I can put it onto the screen. So no, no, no problem for that. Uh, once you switch over from from ours, because otherwise we'll get the recursion. There we go. Perfect. And I can flip over to that. Fantastic. So uh, let me start. So basically, before we start, like uh, talking about Power BI and Perview, so why it's interesting. So first of all, digital transformation. We are talking about this a lot, but if you take a few step backs and see what is the transformation that happened in the last five years, it started before COVID. It was accelerated 
during COVID, we see that like a lot of organizations that uh, five years ago will say, hey, we are not mm -hmm. shifting to the cloud. We are not shifting to digital services. Now shifting, one, because they want to be competitive. Second, they see the value because uh, all the new products, the connectivity, the availability is fantastic. So there is a huge digital transformation growth and it's continuous. So it's sort of like something uh, switched and every uh, and a lot of organizations are now like more open to it and moving toward digital transformation and even with covid over um, uh, it's like changing but still like hybrid becomes became standard like uh, it uh, more and more people and organizations uh, work a, a substantial time a part of their time from remote so like these services become mission critical uh, the second uh, item is sensitive business uh, 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 sensitive business critical data is in the dark so like and every time that you go to a big organization the person who's responsible for security or deploying any data analytic system is sort of like he, he this person is responsible to know where sensitive data is, where are the highly confidential reports, where is the customer data is. This should be managed and governed because for each data asset, they have a data protection policy that they need to enforce. And based on the surveys that Microsoft did, 30% of the decision makers state that they are not, not entirely sure where their sensitive data is, which can be a problem. Why it can be a problem? Because if there is a data leakage, and uh, and as investigate like your big enterprise and there is a data sensitive data leakage or customer information leakage and you're doing investigations that you're required by the regulators yes and you see ah it was leaked because it was in some plain uh, word document or it was in some report or in some, or somebody sent an email uh, not to the person that they're supposed to send, but auto, uh, <laughs> I don't, it's happened a lot to me, like uh, autocomplete of the emails, uh, autocompletes to your colleague from, uh, your friend from university and not to your colleague in Microsoft or in any other company. And then like if your sensitive data goes out, it's a leakage and you need to report it and you need to investigate it. So this is a big problem and the organization invests a lot of time and effort on fixing it. And the, if there is a good solution, uh, they can become, be, be, instead of focused on integrations and deployments, they can focus on information and insights. So this is why this is a big thing. The third thing that it was be, even before like the economic uh, meltdown <laughs> that we are experiencing in the last year, uh, the costs, uh, because uh, like every big uh, organization has quite a lot of systems. So I, I work with somebody from a small company they have like dozens of like for each solution they have like for HR they have a system for business they have a, a system for devs they have a system and they need to have security systems for all of them so they buy a bunch of security products from various vendors which uh, comes up with a lot of cost for licenses and also maintenance because you need people in your organization that really understand how to operate all of these systems. So it's it's a mess. So 80% of the decision makers are really not happy <laughs> with the cost that they need to pay for, to maintain um, all of the security uh, products. And the last one, which is uh, surprising, but not too much surprising already, Microsoft becoming a huge security vendor. So everybody knows that Microsoft is huge in Windows, huge in Office, huge in Teams, huge in Azure. Microsoft is quite huge in security. So this is from, I think, a year ago. Microsoft revenues were uh, $15 billion from security products, 40% year-over-year growth, and Microsoft also committed to invest additional $20 billion uh, in order to, like, to improve and enhance security products. And mm -hmm. if you, and Microsoft, like if you think about it, we have thousands, literally thousands of engineers, researchers, and product managers working on security products. Why? First of all, we need to protect Azure. We need to protect our online yeah. services. We need yeah. to protect Windows. Second, we are also selling the security products. So Microsoft Purview, uh, which was previously Microsoft Compliance, E5 uh, deals, a, a endpoint protection, cloud app security, defender for cloud, like Microsoft ha has qu quite a, a wide uh, stack of security products and very uh, high expertise in 
building security because it sort of like serves us also internally, like for the products that we offer customers, and also we sell it as a product to customers. So this is a background for uh, for uh, our conversation. And uh, now, what what is Microsoft Fairview? And I think this is something that uh, like. It's not very clear to a lot of customers that I talk with. So Microsoft Purview, it started as Azure Purview, but it's no longer Azure Purview, it's Microsoft Purview. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, it's a different thing. So Microsoft Purview is a comprehensive solutions to help govern, protect, and manage your data state. So uh, I think the emphasis is on the word solutions. It's not one solution, it's few solutions. Uh, and uh, to help understand what are these solutions? So just uh, uh, so these are the solutions that Microsoft has. These are all the Purview per product family. So we have a data map and data catalog, which was previously called Azure Purview. You have privacy management. You have audit. You have e-discovery. You have information protection, data loss prevention. All of these products are Microsoft Purview. Mm -hmm. And uh, and basically, like to connect. So basically, Microsoft Purview is a new brand that Microsoft announced about a year ago, uh, which co uh, connected between uh, two existing uh, brands. One was Azure Purview, which now called Microsoft Purview Governance Portal. And the other one, uh, one was Microsoft Compliance Portal, previously called Office 365 Compliance, uh, which is now called Microsoft Purview Compliance Portal. So this is like, so when I say Purview, Microsoft, uh, Power BI has integration with Microsoft Purview, we have actually integration with both of these products under the Microsoft Purview brand. And the, all, uh, and the idea of, uh, behind this unification was like, hey, we want better together. We see that there are like capabilities uh, that are available in Azure Purview that can be relevant for the compliance, and there are capabilities in compliance that can be relevant for Azure Purview. We are one Microsoft, so let's uh, connect them together and uh, have this synergy. And uh, in this slide, you can see all of the solutions that Power BI integrated with, which I will cover during this session. Perfect. Any questions so far? Nothing yet from the chat, but I do wonder the um, overall the what was the tipping point that you know that that was kind of a decision for them to go from an Azure product to a Microsoft. What was that the straw that broke the camel's back that finally is like this needs to be its own platform rather than a, a component of Azure? So I think like uh, Microsoft uh, wants to focus like uh, on clear pillars. And uh, so basically, when Azure Purview sort of like started, uh, it was like before call, it was Azure Purview, it was Azure Data Catalog. So it's like it has some history and there was Azure Information Protection. So I think it was like initially in sort of like identified the need and hey, let's ship all of these like compliance and governance capabilities that are available for Office. So like a few years back, if you look on uh, Microsoft compliance, it's mainly serving Office. It's not very much extendable for other products. And there was an idea, hey, maybe we need to build something similar for Azure. And I think okay. as both products evolve and as our, as our understanding of customers evolve, I think the, our, the leadership identified that there, it's better to join forces because there is a much more overlap than difference between the products. Okay. So. And uh, another, yeah, and another motivation for this unification is like, uh, like if you look at Microsoft compliance, it was focused main on like Microsoft products like Office, uh, SharePoint, OneDrive, Windows, etc. Uh, versus uh, Azure Purview, which is sort of like uh, uh, had a promise, uh, still has a promise and delivers on it to scan uh, multi-cloud, multi-platform. And one of the things that Microsoft wants to do, is they actually want to join two of these products together to deliver multi-cloud, multi-platform compliance and governance solution. So, so like both products bring uh, value. Like one can sort of like scan and build the, the very rich data map for all of the assets, first party, Microsoft third party. Uh, and the other has like very advanced security and compliance capabilities, and it's very 
widely adopted within enterprises. So there are, in my opinion, there are very few large enterprises that don't use any of the Microsoft compliance features. Excellent. No, thank you for that. And I think that that's helpful to give context about kind of the, that evolution um, and the and eventually separation into it, its its own platform. And I did have a, a question from Matthias that I'll, I'll bring up and I'll, I'll read out to you is uh, he wants to know, is Purview at all encompassed in any O365 package or any eSKU? Um, I'll also say as well, um, or is it uh, like, what are the, the cost involved uh, for, for companies that want to use this? So I think the cost, they haven't updated, uh, haven't introduced yet unified uh, licensing. So it's still like for uh, the products that were under the Microsoft compliance, it's still E3, E5. Uh, and for uh, Azure Purviews, they have their own like subs uh, Azure subscription uh, usage model. Yep, and I'm putting that in now. It's essentially like the most of the cost comes into the amount of content that needs to be scanned. Pretty much at the end of the day, it's it's compute costs that, for this, that, that goes for through. This the, yeah, for, this for, for the for the for the governance portal. Yes, at the top. Yeah, for here we also like in data loss prevention. When I cover, we have also like classification and the amount of data is a factor. I will get to it, uh, but in information protection and audit, it's uh, it's just license. It's not uh, like the volume isn't a factor. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So let's move on. So let's start with information protection for BI. This actually like was our first data protection collaboration with uh, uh, Microsoft security teams. Uh, and so, uh, what does what is Microsoft Purview Information Protection? It was previously Microsoft Information Protection, so we could call it MIP, but no longer. So it's Microsoft Purview Information Protection. Uh, so it's a it's a platform that enables organization to discover and classify data. Uh, uh, like before uh, joining with Azure Purview, it's like only Microsoft assets data, but now they're expanding. This is like the better together. Uh, built in labeling and protection, which is like the main integration we did into Power BI. So you can label and protect sensitive data. And it's extendable. So if you uh, search for MIP SDK, uh, you actually can sort of like take the SDK and incorporate it in additional products. So this is like how we did it. And encryption built into Microsoft 365. So like if uh, like you can encrypt files with this, and if when you upload it to Microsoft 365 products, not Power BI yet, but for other products, uh, it uh, it, it preserves pro protection and access controls. When well, a lot of the labeling, just as I mentioned to that, I think extends across like um, cer certain protections and, and labeling. Uh, there's consistency across the Microsoft platforms um, in, in terms of the, the, the standardization of the, the types of security types of labels or sensitivity that can be applied to, the, to pretty much any, any piece of data or artifact um, in, in between Power BI and other stuff, right? Uh, yes and no. To a degree. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, so like the concept is fantastic because like, and this is like why I show the screenshot from uh, Excel. So basically, this is the most common usage of uh, Microsoft Information Protection. Some customers still use Azure Information Protection like with the add-in, but this is like the idea of applying sensitivity levels. And the fantastic thing here is that like the security or compliance team defines label scheme, unified label scheme, it publishes it to users, and then users can apply the same labels in Office and in Power BI and in other M365 products, and also they can do it in Synapse and in SQL. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Azure Purview, they uh, they have some ability to scan and sort of like apply sensitivity labels in the catalog, like but it's sort of like it's not applied within the systems itself. It's sort of but in catalog you can use sensitivity labels to some extent. So and the, wh why it's so important? Because like if like you look on like. Uh, Pro eighty twenty, uh, like you can do eighty percent of uh, your compliance and governance requirements by labeling your content. Like the protection, you like from our experience, protection is applied only on small portion of the uh, documents. But even the fact that the content is applied with sensitivity label, then the users that consume it, if they went to security training or compliance training in their organization, they know to look and see where what is the sensitivity level. And they, if it's highly confidential, they should not tweet this screenshot to other uh, uh, in their Twitter account. 
Um, but if there is no sensitivity level and they do tweet, then it's sort of like a, a already different in the discussion. Did the organization did a good training? Did the employee knew that they should not tweet it or no? So this is just like a sort of like a, an example. Also, mm-hmm. when the data is a, a classified and labeled, there are like quite a lot of regulations that sort of like say, hey, you need to label the data. So w- w- like to meet some basic regulation uh, requirement, the la- data should be labeled with a sensitivity level. Even if it's not sensitive, it's public or uh, general, like the fact it's classified, it's already make you compliant. So this is like the the big values that we see here. And in office, uh, as we mentioned, uh, this also can apply encryption to files. So this is another great value. Well, the encryption especially, yeah, because it's not just whether or not like um, labeling how it should be shared, and distributed, but actually making sure that the file itself is protected for the content within. Exactly, exactly. And uh, and this is where we see soon the value. So what like what are the problems that you can solve if you use information protection for BI? So first of all, you can you have a solution that we'll see in a few seconds how it looks. The, built into the product, you need to, you do not need to install anything to, uh, yeah. to classify sensitive data. And if, uh, also if you think about it, like if in office, some of the emails and some of the documents are sort of like not very sensitive, you can maybe do your uh, to-do list or you maybe can uh, sort of like write private email or just chatting with a friend. Usually when you upload data to Power BI, it's business data. Like not a lot of people upload non-business data to uh, Power BI. And business data is much more sensitive and, uh, and the risk for data leakage is much uh, higher because the impact of uh, the leakage is much higher than in mm-hmm. other parts. So it's built into the platform, it's unified. So we saw it's the same labels that user. So once the user know how to apply them in office, they're very close to understand how to apply them in Power BI. We want to have, we aim and we already have very similar user experience, works the same, same taxonomy. And then protection. So because we are one Microsoft, we know how to implement and how to carry the label when we, like if the label applied on SQL, we pull the data to Power BI, okay. within Power BI, you create reports, dashboards, we know how to carry the label and we know how to carry it when the data is exported to Office. And uh, the last one, the price, it's reduced go- governance and complexity cost for your customer. Because if you don't use this built-in solution, you'll probably need to do, use something else. You will need to build something custom. You will need to maintain it. It's months of engineering work and you need someone yeah. to maintain it. And this already built into the product. So it's a plug and play. Well, and that's that's what I try to tell anybody with the SaaS services. Like, well, I mean, couldn't I do this myself? Yes. I mean, you, if you want to spend the, the the person hours to, you know, to go through and do something like this manually, you could. Um, you, or you could you know pay something that's mostly a one click uh, process that does it, you know it maps eighty to ninety percent of what you need, and then you go and uh, you adjust the knobs and dials to you know to to, yeah. to, di- to make sure it's just doing things appropriately. But it's also saving you dozens, if not hundreds, of hours across various teams, and it um, it scales as you continually recatalog as stuff gets added, um, modified, or removed from your platform. Exactly, and like and the maintenance, like if it, uh, as you scale, we scale with it. And if there is a problem, mm-hmm. you open a ticket on Microsoft. You don't need to have your own service engineer going into your own code, maintain it, uh, and investigate what happened. So I think like exactly. this is the cost that, uh, in my opinion, is the most expensive. Not the licensing, but actually like the humans that need to be ramped up on this, monitor it, and fix it. This is like the greater cost that we are saving here. Agreed. So basically, what we provide. Ability to apply sensitivity labels on all Power BI items and PBX files in desktop. And uh, the huge value is that we know how to protect the data when it's exported to Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and PBX files. What do I mean uh, protected? I will have uh, show you a video soon. You can see it in the GIF here as well. So as we mentioned, it's the same sensitivity labels that used in Office. So if this sensitivity label has encryption, file encryption settings, when somebody exports report a data form report to Excel file, Power BI automatically applies the label and the protection. So the file comes out encrypted. 
So if you by mistake send a, a, an email with a file attached to your a friend from college instead of uh, to your uh, colleague, this person, if they are not authorized, they won't be able to open the encrypted file. So this is like a great protection from data leakage. And uh, but like on the other hand, people who are within your organization and authorized for this data can easily open it and consume it. So they don't need to install anything. It's built into the office. Just click, click, and it's open. Uh, and uh, so it's ready. Uh, we light up very soon. So as I mentioned, we tried to have a lined experience with Office. So we're adding very uh, nice additions to have uh, colors. Uh, so you you will see the uh, not only the label but the colors that can be indicative and help people to identify the sensitivity only by looking at the color and the and the icon and also ability to apply the sensitivity labels from new flyout experience. So you'll be able to click uh, click and just apply the label without going to settings. So this is coming very soon. Oh, excellent. Okay. And this is like one of the my favorite sort of like one Microsoft values, like how we pro maintain sensitivity and on export to office protection within Microsoft. So basically we did co uh, collaboration with uh, Synapse and SQL team uh, uh, and with office team. Uh, on uh, so the sensitivity levels that are applied on Excel files, when you get data from this Excel file, the sensitivity level automatically applied on the Power BI content, whether it's coming from Excel file, Azure Synapse, or SQL database, or on-premise SQL database. So I'll give you an example. So if uh, like, and this is very common. So when organization use sensitivity labels uh, in office, most of the Excel files already come with some sensitivity level, highly confidential, confidential. Mm -hmm. So what will happen when you try, uh, when you get data to Power BI desktop, uh, Power BI will identify the sensitivity level of the Excel file and automatically apply it on, on the PBX file. So if, it, if, the, if the file should be encrypted, it will become encrypted and only authorized people will be able to access it. And this is without, uh, we discussed AI and automation. So it's not AI, but it's like saves a lot of uh, effort for the users, uh, like to remember, to see what was the original label and go manually apply it, it's seamless. And same happens when they pull data from uh, Azure Synapse or on-premise SQL, SQL databases. So. Uh, any questions for this part? Even if it, it might be not very clear, so feel free to ask questions. Yeah, feel feel free to come. Um, just drop those into the chat if you have any more about uh, the the pipeline process here. But I I think so far nothing that I've seen besides that uh, that initial question that we had. Um, oh, and actually, yeah, great, we can actually see a demo kind of of the process of providing that indeed and decrypted, um, which hopefully will also answer some questions that I um, might have. So I'll, I'll hold those until the end. So let's start. So we are starting from Microsoft Pervy portal. This is a portal where the security and compliance admins uh, define the insensitivity table scheme. So there is information protection solution, which I mentioned before. And here, the security and compliance admin defines a label policy for entire organization. Now we are in, a, in data, classif data discovery and classification in Azure portal, and the SQL data owner can apply these sensitivity labels on the columns in the SQL databases. So, uh, so all the columns are uh, uh, classified according to the data protection policy. Now we are in Power BI. What we see is the lineage view. And uh, here we have a lineage that actually pulls data from the SQL. And upon after the labels were set, refresh, fetch the labels, and apply them on the data set. All the Power BI reports connected to it, and the Power BI dashboard connected to it automatically. Now, if when some oh, okay. user connects, uh, like views this report, mm -hmm. they already see that it has confidential data without like anybody doing something manual. And when they export this data outside of uh, Power BI, so uh, it's you don't believe how much common it is people exporting data to Excel. The Excel is automatically applied with label and encryption. So authorized users can uh, use it freely. Everything works uh, as it's supposed to. But if you by mistake send it or people who are not authorized get access to this file, they won't be able to open it because the encryption will ensure that they are authorized to open it. And uh, this is a unique to Microsoft value. I haven't personally encountered other companies that are uh, providing such end-to-end -end value. So from your analytics system to business analytics system, 
to your uh, business consumption, like uh, for business users in office, the protection travels end to end. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And I think the, the being able to have the data um, basically have a security guard on the entire journey following it is, uh, is, is very important because, I mean, as we know in the Microsoft ecosystem or in any, any ecosystems, there's uh, there, there's a lot of data movement um, that, that can happen um, b between environments or needs to, depending on the, the features or capabilities of, of the systems, um, especially as it gets you know, turned from raw data into consumption-based data that's used in reports and analytics. So being able to, to continue to get, carry that protection and certification and labeling is, uh, is really nice to be able to see that go from, from both ends of this all the way through. And it's all automatic. So this, I think, like this is a strong thing, so that the owners uh, can take a responsibility to classify the data that uh, apply labels on data that isn't applied with labels. And then, when somebody mm -hmm. uh, like builds reports or dashboards uh, op op on top of this data, the, uh, the sensitivity label applied automatically. And when they export it outside of Power BI, so in Power BI there is a permission model. So to access that in Power BI, somebody has to give you permissions to workspace or to report. Uh, but when you export data without sensitivity levels outside of Power BI, it's just a file. Everybody, like uh, everyone who will get this file can open it, uh, even if it has highly confidential sensitive data. With this solution, we make it very actually seamless for organization to maintain protection even when the data is exported outside of Power BI. Oh, yes, uh, and I think the um, one of the, 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 the scenarios that I, I'm thinking of for this is uh, as far as the, the encryptions for each, each of the, the, the pipelines going um, essentially from wherever it's ingested in, um, into here and everything, does that also, uh, does that carry through when, once it's getting into Excel? Um, if you were using uh, Analyze in Excel, which I can't remember if this is specifically doing that, does that also pass through whether or not you use um, the portal to get it into Excel or using the get data option? All of that's still inherited through, through those methods and uh, depending on what the data set is, um, is classified as. So when you do export from the portal, it will always apply a label on the, so it downloads the file and then you establish a connection. So the files that you download already applied with the sensitivity label. So when you establish a connection, the label already set. Uh, and, and that, that's for exporting the data, I think, right? When you when you like and not analyze in Excel. So oh, analyze okay, so, so both of them. Yeah. So when you uh, generate the analyze in Excel, it also downloads an Excel file just with a link instead yep. of the data. So this file also gets a label and the protection is applied. Um, and uh, it's for newer, uh, so it's already out for a couple of years. So maybe most of the customers already have it. For the newer Excel versions, I think it requires E3 license. So when you connect to Power BI from Excel, it will also work. So it will uh, if okay. it, it will identify if there is sensitivity label on the model and will provide the policy tip about hey we apply the label or we recommend you to apply a label. Okay, no, that's perfect. It's good I to know have... um, that it that it works with those. So excellent. So yeah, so uh -huh, this here actually, we go. Uh, yeah, so just uh, so this is what you were asking about. So mm -hmm. this is when you use a supported client. So here I'm uh, in this GIF. Somebody connects to a data set that has a sensitivity label, and voila, Office uh, has a policy tip shows the policy tip oh, that the label was applied, and the protection as well. So this is like something that very hard to achieve in any other way, which is also not. What they also like in this one is that it's not fully automatic, it's actually inherited. So it's even, in my opinion, smarter automatic because like sometimes automatic scan does not have the context from where the data is coming from. And here, like if already data owner identifies the data is with certain sensitivity level, this sensitivity level persists. So it's sort of like reduce the risk of wrong labeling, in my opinion, at least. Okay. No. Yeah. Like I, I, I think the the inheritance of that and the uh, the natural propagation of all those labels downstream is super useful. I did, uh, is the the Power BI datasets isn't in preview though anymore. I think it's just regular. Uh, what uh, what is the question? It was just in in the screenshot. It was showing um pre uh, Power BI datasets preview at the top. I think it's just it's just a regular feature yeah. now in Excel, right? Uh, in Excel, it's, I think it's a regular feature. I didn't double check okay. it. Yeah, I think it's a, a, a regular feature now. Yeah, yeah it, I think it's out of preview. Yep. 
Yeah, and uh, so basically another example. So uh, we have this integration with Azure SQL and Synapse, but still a lot of customers use SQL Server, on-prem servers. So the same uh, functionality can be achieved using SSMS on on-prem SQL servers. So you can apply the classification there. And uh, when people connect to this data from Power BI, uh, the sensitivity level will be inherited. Okay, excellent, excellent. But you need to check like the server version. I think it's from 2018 or something like this. So it's not, uh, we don't have backward compatibility. It's for a starting a, a certain SQL version. So out of curiosity, like if you're trying to access the, a DB that had that set with it from like another, <clears throat> um, a ver another version of SSMS or SQL Server, are you still able to connect to the data and it just doesn't have the, the labels or is it just deny you access? So if, if there are labels, and you're connected yep. in like uh, the labels already applied on the columns in yep. your scenario. Uh, so when uh, when you fetch data from uh, when Power BI will fetch data, part of the data that being fetched is the sensitivity level metadata. So mm. okay, perfect. It, it will be applied by Power BI. Okay, excellent. Oh, and even in the mobile apps, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so in mobile apps you can see it. In Teams you can see it. So like uh, this is like the value of like uh, knowing where uh, the, the data is sensitive. So most of the organization trust their end users, but uh, like uh, we we want to help organization to help themselves. So if I'm trusting user, uh, I would like to help them by letting them know what is the sensitivity level of the report, so they could uh, treat it properly. Few more features, and I will move now faster to DLP policies. Few more features is like, uh, so if you're enterprise, you probably want uh, everything to be applied with sensitivity labels. So we provide several tools for this. First one is default label policy. So organization can define what is the default policy for each user. And then when you create content in Power BI, the default label will be applied. So if uh, I'm working in HR, maybe my default label will be confidential HR. So every time I create a new report, it, by default, it will get confidential HR, and then I can update it according to what I think fit. OK. The second one is mandatory label policy. So basically, if you want to not to set default, but you want people to choose a label or uh, prevent them from removing label, uh, we the organization can enable a mandatory label policy and then it will sort of like in, uh, prevent any creation or save without the sensitivity label applied and what's being shown there just uh, um, just to make sure like that they were selecting a visual and making changes but like that that sensitivity label is being applied to that report yeah so basically there was a report that was probably created before the enable sensitivity label and now somebody comes to edit it and uh, uh, okay so so previously historical reports, when, when the request happens, it's for net new reports, or if a report is republished or uh, yes. edited in the service, then the, uh, that additional field basically has to be filled out now. Exactly, mandatory and default. And this is like how you start backfilling the classification for the new content and the content yep. that's been edited. So the additional value is like for security and compliance. So we have a special uh, sensitivity tables events audited to the audit logs. So there you can uh, it, like it enriches the information that the security and compliance admin have for their for forensic investigations. Uh, activity, I will skip this one. Another one that is very strong. So you're coming to be customer that already runs for probably for a few years and they enable sensitivity labels. And many of customers that we work with have some uh, have a substantial estate with uh, of content that they would like to backfill with sensitivity labels just to meet the compliance and the regulatory requirements. It usually comes like they have an audit review and then they identify, hey, we need to label the content to be compliant, and then they okay they enable all the switch they are doing the testing enabling all the switches, but then they say, okay, we still have a lot of content that is was created years ago. How do we update it? So we provided an admin API and we actually have, a, if somebody wants help, we can, like we have a, a tool that we built and should be published to GitHub soon that uh, enables you to sort of like get all of the items that do not have sensitivity labels and pro programmatically choose which sensitivity label to clown it. So you can sort of like, cover thousands and millions uh, of uh, items uh, programmatically uh, with this feature. Uh, 
That's and we nice. have okay. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. And we have some reports that actually help you to see the status, which we are working to improve. Stay tuned. Like a lot of in enhancements will be announced at build. And also like uh, for the reporting experience, uh, we will have a, a very, very, very significant upgrade for the richness of the visuals and the information that you can get about sensitivity labels uh, in your Power BI tenant. So to enable information protection, you just need to allow users, uh, you go to, like, first of all, sensitivity labels should be deployed in Office. This is a prerequisite. You cannot enable sensitivity labels only in Power BI. It's, we can have, a, like, there is a background to this, but this is, like, how it is today, because, like, still, Office is the more dominant product in the every organization in Power BI. So, and for to maintain the end-to-end -end protection value, uh, we require users to enable it for Office first, and then they can enable it in for Power BI, and then they can do it uh, via admin settings. And we have a granular setting. So, like, usually customers do testing on test tenant, and then they do a rollout. So even uh, like similar to other Power BI feature, when you're rolling out this feature, you can choose specific security groups. So you don't need to turn it on for everybody at once. You can do sort of like pilots for some departments before you turn it on for everybody. So license that I covered, so you do need additional license. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So data loss prevention, and this is sexy. So this is like, uh, or like at least cool, because it's uh, much, uh, much closer to the artificial intelligence uh, and sort of like automation. Uh, basically, similar to the opportunity we saw and implemented with information protection, we identified that uh, some organization also needs some automatic abilities to identify upload of sensitive data and take some uh, actions w when this happens. So uh, we integrated uh, Microsoft Power Data Loss Prevention Policies to Power BI, and uh, we have automatic detection of, uh, of upload of sensitive data, and we have a, a couple of actions that uh, the admin can configure that will be triggered automatically. And once again, everything is sort of like configurable. You don't need to deploy products. Uh, uh, Microsoft Perview has the ability to run test policies. So the policies are running without affecting usage uh, before you deploy them widely. And this was actually J this week. So the J was announced this Monday. Check out for blog from Yelbis, uh, PM on my team, who uh, drove this feature. And uh, yeah, it's J. so... Everybody can try it now. Uh, I know that there is a lot of reservation for enterprise customers to test, uh, test preview features, so it's changed. Well, and uh, how does it, uh, I guess, detect the like the the, the touch points of, of export? Does it just basically identify any time anybody uses any type of an export feature in Power BI that wasn't properly configured, or? So this one is actually for the upload. So if like information oh, protection was for export from Power BI, this one for upload to Power BI. So like uh, if uh, like this is something that we heard from a lot of uh, fintech and uh, uh, not only fintech, but financial industry in general and healthcare. So they have much more regulations than other enterprises about what what they do with their data. Uh, who can access it, etc. So they need a way to automatically identify if somebody uploads data that they should not upload to cloud or upload it to some workspace that, like, uh, for example, in Europe, there is a GDPR similar to California, CCPA. Uh, so if somebody uploads data that they should not upload, they want to know about this as soon as possible and mitigate it. Uh, if they don't, they have sort of like a breach in regulation and then all of the bad things happen. Uh, okay, okay. Good context. Okay, so th th this is a problem that we ca come to solve with Microsoft Perfect Data Loss Prevention Policies. So th there are a few options there. You can uh, trigger it uh, by sensitivity label. So some customers have hey, we do not want anybody uploading something that is highly confidential HR, right? Or highly confidential shushu. So basically sensitivity level can be a condition and every time that data is uploaded to data set on premium capacity, with this label, uh, it will be detected. 
there, are, there is a set of over 100 out-of-the-box sensitive info types like credit card, uh, social security number, etc., that you can use and detect if uh, uh, data with this pattern was uploaded. And the last one, which I personally very much like, is sort of like custom sensitive info types. So like uh, each organization might have their own credit card number that they use uh, like a, 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 or prefix or something like this or some secret project name. So what, and they do not want it to be uploaded or if it's uploaded, they want to notify the users that uploading it, hey, this is super sensitive. So with DLP policies, this all made automatic. Let me just switch to demo and uh, then uh, I will come back to additional, uh, uh, come back to the slides. Perfect. So basically this uh, demo also starts from Microsoft Perby portal. Uh, you can go and uh, create new DLP policy and uh, this DLP policy, uh, you can choose to apply it on Power BI, and here you can choose on which workspaces. So you can ch create DLP policy for specific workspaces. It's not, you, you are not necessarily need to deploy it for all workspaces. And then you can choose a condition, which in this uh, video is sensitive info type, and you can search from the available info types and choose like, okay, everything that has some social security number, let's detect it. And uh, this is part of the action. So user notification, you uh, like a security admin, you can write a custom policy tip. So when this happens, user will see the policy tip, say, hey, this is what you need to do with this data. And the second one is the automatic alerting. So you don't need to eyeball the emails or you don't need to go over the items or do inquiries. If this incident happens, it's going to be audited and you can get an alert. So this is like a, the configuration of the rule. Okay, and I, I'm guessing similar to Power BI, you can probably set alerts to be sent to individuals or security groups or anything like that, right? Yeah, so in the portal, you can specify who will get the alert. And so here we have a refresh of a data set that has a social security number. Here is the poli custom policy tips that the data owner can, uh, can see. And the- uh, That's nice, okay. And the alert that was triggered so you can see it in Microsoft Purview Alert uh, tab, but as you mentioned, it, it can be uh, forwarded to users automatically. So even if you go to Outlook and you were configured to get this email, it will be in your email. Oh, that's fantastic. I love it. And especially, I mean, any any company that, that deals with enough uh, authors and report consumers, you know, to, to the degree that you can individually monitor those. I think a lot of those automatic alerts are going to be really useful for um, preventing the accidental up uploads or or extracts, but really just making sure that people are, are applying proper compliance to the uh, to the models that uh, that are going into the service. So um, I've come across more than my fair share of companies and organizations that forget to uh, use choose columns or, or <laughs> get rid of information that is not needed uh, necessarily in the report uh, on, for many different degrees um, from people's information to sensitive uh, customer data. So this is uh, good stuff, I think, to be able to automate. Exactly. And this is like the scale. So this is like uh, if you uh, come back to like one of my first slides. So we have like know where your sensitive data is. So DLP policy can help you detect where your sensitive data is. Uh, cost, uh, so uh, from a cost perspective, it reduces the cost because it's automatic. It's built into the product. So you, and as you scale, it scales with you. So you don't need to have additional deployments. Uh, and the alerting auto and automation that we discussed, like how do we automate the processes? This is how we automate the processes. No, I think this is a great overview of uh, a lot of the the touch points and features that come with this. So um, I'm definitely uh, appreciative of being able to get a review of this, but also seeing the the amount of connection points that it has of data to pull in um, to monitor and to to help alert for. Uh, what are the what are the number of connectors at the at the moment for um for Purview? So yeah, so what we saw now was like information protection data loss prevention policies. Uh, mm -hmm. This is Microsoft Purview data map. So they have like 
tons of uh, I, I think uh, 35 data sources with a lot of uh, data classifiers. Uh, some of them are the same that we use for DLP policies. So it's like um, this is like one another example of how Microsoft uh, leverage uh, the tech. And basically, this is the foundation. So the data map uh, and the scanning is a foundation. So it can scan various sources. It can be used for data cataloging scenarios. So it has like quite a lot of value for Power BI and other products. And as we move along, it will be sort of like the baseline for security and compliance. So security and compliance admin will be able to leverage this data map to govern and, and manage mm -hmm. all of the data estate across products. And this is on the way. So currently we mainly provide, uh, Microsoft provides here only catalog. It's a huge value, but like it's, we're only in the beginning of the end vision of multi-cloud, multi-platform, uh, Microsoft Service solution. Right, exactly. The um, And as you said, there, there's also just going to be um, some really cool, many cool things for many different features being announced uh, at Build that will change the story for a lot of stuff um, uh, in four weeks. Yeah, so we're almost out of time, but uh, just like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just to call out the scanner API. Oh, uh, please. Yeah, so this is actually one of my favorite features. I didn't, I wasn't the PM for it, but I sort of like admire it because uh, some, uh, we built an API that uh, enables uh, everybody to fetch all the metadata about Power BI and the lineage. So information about the items and also the lineage between them. And this is actually the API that powers a per view data catalog and per view data map. And it's also used by uh, Informatica, Alation, and Colibra in their scenarios. So for Power BI. And we see a huge number of customers that using it for custom reporting. So basically you can run, a, a, run this yep. API to fetch all the metadata and build your custom reports. Uh, a lot of, or, or if you're using Informatica or Alation or Colibra or Microsoft Purview, you will see like Power BI data. Uh, coming from the scanner API, huge value. It provides incremental scan, it can be run with service principle. All of the stuff that enterprises love and need are available there. And uh, so this is to summarize. So uh, beside inheritance from data source, so inheritance coming from SQL and Excel, which is still in preview, and we plan to get later this year, all of other capabilities are generally available. So this is something that's very important for enterprise customers, very important for MVPs and others. You know, people want to try the new stuff, but they want to try them when they know that they're not changing. So all of these capabilities are in general availability. Well, I think too, uh, just, just back to your mention on the the, the goal, I, I'm assuming of this and, and, and a lot of the products um, that it's connecting to is eventually to, to give access to most of of the locations that the client and customer data exists in. Um, I do know that, that one of the stumbling points that I, I think was funny and like has, has since been addressed is like when this was first announced, super awesome feature, but I remember that Dynamics technically had to, you had, you had to do a, like a custom connector to get the Dynamics data um, in, into there. And it was it was just like, of all of, you know, of all the products, like Dynamics should be one of the first native connectors that comes with it. Um, it's, it's since been incorporated, but to your conversation on API, and custom reports. So I've seen people like Rui and a few others for like the you know, Power BI admin portal. They built basically templates, uh, report templates that people can plug and play, get their data in from a monitoring perspective. Have you seen anybody who's created some really cool reports or templates based off of the scanner API available for purview um, where you can have some like starter kit reports um, and, and data sets for Power BI that, that kind of pulls all this data in together so they, they don't have to build it completely from scratch? So I think like Rui is like uh, the one that I know who uh, shared them. I d d do know, but uh, people don't publish them that a lot of organizations like build them. So like I come to the customer call and then, then I see a very pretty dashboard of, uh, and hey, really nice dashboard. And then they see like shows that they build it based on scanner APIs. I'm not aware of somebody, but I can check uh, like if somebody published additional templates uh, I do want to uh, sort of like call out that uh, Microsoft sort of like uh, got the hint here and uh, we are working on sort of yeah. like uh, improving the reporting and uh, build a sort of like stay tuned for build. I think you will see some very nice uh, improvements there. Excellent. Yeah. And I, 
I think the, the the smart thing to do is essentially give give people access to like a, a a Power BI template file or something that has most of the stuff built, and then hey, customize it as much as you want. Like we'll we'll give you eighty percent, and it has mo you know pretty it has all the fields, everything's been configured. Well, yeah, here's a few basic pages, but now you can kind of figure out how you would prefer to monitor this if you want to change it at all. Um, and that that seems to be a smart approach that I've seen with a lot of people that build admin monitoring tools. I know like with Power BI Sentinel and Purple Frog, they have a PBIT file that connects to this, their portal the same way. Like we built what you we think you need, but just take the file, do whatever you want with it, and uh, it will continue to uh, to monitor all of your stuff. So um, I'll pay attention you know, to to build, and hopefully everyone watching as well does that. But some really cool uh, upcoming things will be coming um, from that. And I this is a this is a year of big changes. I think just in general for for Microsoft. So it's uh, interesting um, to see what's already come out and things that will be. Coming. Yeah, uh, Microsoft becoming more and more one Microsoft, which is fantastic. So stay tuned for build. Yes, I mean, yeah, it's already yeah. been a strong um, component of Microsoft is it's very integrated and the integrations are just going to keep getting better for sure. Exactly. I think like uh, this is one of the values and one of the things that I love about working for Microsoft is sort of like uh, this is actually like something that I would like to do. And then like uh, my organization culture actually uh, values when I try to connect between different products, different product teams, to make uh, the Microsoft experience more fluent. Uh, like because like Microsoft is huge, so like every organization can operate uh, by its own, and you can see that like the comics uh, that were, were made from Balmer era on before <laughs> about Microsoft culture, and I really happy to see the uh, Microsoft is probably one of the best culture companies in the world and at least in israel if it's uh, met it stands for something microsoft is rated already for the last three or four years as best employer and i think this is one of the reasons why like the values and the culture of microsoft agreed absolutely i appreciate you walking through all this today this has been um, a fantastic overview i think of a lot of that and plus the integrations both um, from within power bi externally connected to this and also just talking about data culture to a degree and um the governance and administration that goes into you know protecting securing and, and monitoring data um so i think this was a fantastic overview that will give people watching and then all the recordings for this as well a good um, a good window into uh this part of the requirements for a lot of uh, medium to enterprise level clients who really start to need to to automate this once you hit a, a certain point that just you're <laughs> You're all in one hat, admin, DBA, analyst, and everything just can't do anymore. That one person just can't can't uh, play this role at that point. And one more thing that I forgot to add, but uh, uh, I will share with you off uh, offline. Maybe there is like a deployment guides that uh, Power BI CAD team build, and there is like a fantastic deployment guide for information protection, data loss prevention. So if somebody want to sort of like uh, take it to the next level, they can like look look for this deployment guide. And sort of like get a more detailed perspective of hey, how do I and how do I match between like data protection, data sharing requirements of my organization to the capabilities that uh, Microsoft uh, that Microsoft offers with information protection, data loss prevention. Absolutely yes, and um, I'm just looking at the chat. So nothing remaining um, for from the people in the chat today, but um, I enjoyed the conversations with you quite a bit. Happy to to have you on. I think sometime in the next six to twelve months, because I think there will be some many new conversations to have around this. So I hope, hope to so. Have you back hope on at so. Some point. Yeah. I it will be a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, and thank you for taking time out of your evening to to come on for this. And um, I will. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, be on conversations about some stuff post build and otherwise you have a great rest of your night and um i'll see you again in the future on the on the channel definitely thank you bye All right. thank you bye thank you so much for watching please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and if you want to help support this channel take a look at our channel memberships or our merchandise store for cool swag and last but not least please consider sharing this video on your social media platform of choice to help our channel grow so, until next time.